Hey everybody, DM Jim here, and welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. In this episode, I'm calling this a speed build, maybe. <laughs> what you're about to see is something, it's much bigger than I've ever built uh, in terms of uh, terrain, but I still managed to get it all done in under five hours. Now to me, a speed build for me is something that maybe takes three to four hours. Five hours maybe pushing it. But I've heard some other YouTubers uh, do speed builds that can take under 12 hours. So, you know, maybe I think it's our definition of what a speed build is. I certainly consider this a speed build because um, I made it fast. Uh, for what it is, I made it very quickly. So what is it? Well, let me take a step back and tell you this. Um, I have been receiving, I still continue to get messages from viewers uh, a few episodes back. I think it was this episode. I um, put out the word, I said, you know, hey, if you want me to make something, send me a picture, or tell me what you want me to do. Ooh, bad. Um, not bad. Good. You guys have flooded me with, um, you know, screenshots and pictures and, and um, you know, requests to make uh, certain things. And I've just sort of been collecting them in a folder on my laptop. And uh Recently, I just went through them all and I, I thought to myself, enough, <laughs> I'm good. Uh, obviously, you can still send me stuff, but I'm good. Uh, right now, I have enough requests and ideas and, and um, inspirational images to last me a year or more. Um, I, am, I, I can't keep up with it. There was a pattern, however, with one particular request. Uh, I would estimate, I, I guess I should have gone back and counted. I would guess I probably received about 15 or 20 uh, either requests or images of some sort of centerpiece. Now, when you're playing a war game, a tabletop war game, uh, a centerpiece is kind of nice, especially if it's got some symmetry to it. It doesn't have to have symmetry, but you know, if it's symmetrical, it can be something that both teams or both opponents are trying to reach. Uh, maybe it has some elevated walkways or something like that, but a centerpiece is a nice piece to have. And I, traditionally, I haven't made a lot of those, but I did have a lot of requests for a centerpiece for science fiction terrain. Uh, some of them came with photo requests, like, hey, this is a cool one. Some of them just were like, hey, what could you put in the center of the table that would be, you know, sort of, sort of large? And um, so, you know, I took all these images and I sort of looked at them all and tried to see what they have in common. And uh, then I tried to sketch out my own idea for it. So the big request was for a centerpiece, science fiction, some sort of like command center or, you know, a, a big, you know, a big building. So let me show you what I've made. Um, I'm going to pull back here. This is what I've made. I'm going to spin it around here real slow. Uh, it's my version of a command center. Uh, it's got watchtowers on the left and right uh, with the um, grainy grating for me you know to simulate the metal um, walkways. It's got ladders there, ladders on the side here and there and on the other side to simulate you know to, to provide a place for, um, for for miniatures to move up to the second level and then to the third level. I call this you know level one, level two, level three. And, um, you know, the, these provide, you know, partial cover. Uh, once you obtain one, that's, you know, that's a nice thing to have in a war game. And I did, at first I painted it all black and then I dry brushed it gray and it was lacking something. So I went over it with some white, uh, you know, some, just some highlighting edges. And then I painted a bunch of these little wooden pieces, this lightning blue, this very electric blue and uh, turned it, it, it really, um, it's kind of hard to tell in the video, but in person, it just really pops, it's nice. Anyway, I will include some photos at the uh, end of the video, but let's take a look at how I made this, and I think you'll be surprised. Uh, the main component was chipboard, second component was foam, and then a few odds and ends that uh, you can easily find substitutes for. But let's go to the work table and see how I made this. I began this project with just a pencil and a ruler and some chipboard. I didn't want to have a structure that was a very basic shape like square or rectangle. I knew I wanted some unusual shapes. So I went with these triangular edges with the main doorway sunk in. Now I had to cut two identical pieces from chipboard. One will be the top and one will be the bottom. And in between these two, I took my uh, Proxon cutter and I cut a bunch of 
uh, half inch foam and I just made a bunch of little stands as you can see here and I used um, hot glue, a combination of hot glue on one side and uh, tacky glue on the other and then just put a bunch of heavy objects on top to hold everything down and let the glue dry really well. After that it was time to do the walls. Now the walls were fairly straightforward. I, I knew the height of the structure so I just cut a bunch of strips to that height and then of course for the angles what I did was uh, I would cut sort of halfway through the chipboard uh, to make a score or a crease and then I would just bend the chipboard to, to fit you know the sides. Um, because there were different lengths like three and a half inches and six inches and stuff like that um, I tried to I tried to cover the largest lengths I could using a 12 inch piece of chipboard uh, ultimately it, it wouldn't let me cover everything so I had to cut smaller pieces and then I just hot glued everything in place uh, to give it a, uh, to give it a smooth top after I would use the hot glue, I would use my finger to just press down and rub off the glue uh, that, that sort of squeezed through. And then I used a, a knife to just cut away any uh, overlapping edge to make everything nice and flat and smooth. The total time to make the basic shape was just an hour. After that, I used my Proxon again to just cut a bunch of foam pieces. All of these pieces had sort of bevels and, and irregular cuts. I didn't want just rectangular pieces. I could have done that with chipboard. So all of these pieces you see me gluing here, they all have a beveled front edge, which it's kind of hard to tell from, from that, but later on when I paint everything, I think you'll be able to see it. Now here what I'm doing is I'm cutting the pieces that go on top, and again, they have some strange angles and bevels uh, but I, it just looked really nice. I cut, a bunch, I cut a bunch of small pieces to go on the triangular uh, corners of the structure. Here I'm making the doors. Uh, they were just very simple chipboard, uh, two angled walls and a top piece and then I just glued it in place uh, as you see here. And on top of that I glued more of the little foam, uh, foam sharp pieces that were, that were angled. And here, all this was done in an hour and a half. After that, I started cutting the corner pieces to cover where the uh, chipboard met. For the watch towers, as you can see here, I'm using these little trays, plastic trays. Uh, I just cut uh, one side of them off and then glued them down on a piece of chipboard that I traced out uh, for the base. Glued them all up and uh, then I used these two small cardboard boxes that I got from a hobby shop and I glued them on the ends and then I glued down the watchtowers on top. And then I just used a bunch of wooden circles and squares and random bits and pieces to start covering uh, all over the structure, doors, and you know random panels and things like that. My final uh, my final thing to do was to add these little bendy pieces of tubing. I had glued them onto small circular wooden bases and then I glued one end to the bottom of the towers and then the other end to, this, to the roof and uh, they gave it a nice mechanical industrial look. Finally on the wider ends, the walls, I glued three large squares, wooden squares and then some small rectangular squares beneath the two sides of the watch towers. Total time to do this, I was up to about three and a half hours. I didn't put a little marker here, but three and a half hours in, this is what I had, and then it was time to paint it. Now I started out painting with just acrylic paint, but I couldn't get down in the nooks and crannies, so I ended up going over it with Mod Podge, and then I hit it with spray paint.
After the paint had dried, I gave the entire thing a dry brushing with a light gray. And let me tell you, this took a long time. This probably took about 30 minutes. Uh, I don't like dry brushing large objects, but I have to admit that when it was done, it looked good and weathered. And here you can see it uh, as it was finished. I also added highlights around all the wooden pieces. It was lacking something, so I painted a bunch more of the little wooden pieces with this electric blue, and then I glued them on in various places. Uh, you know, they might be called windows, I'm not sure. But uh, I also cut some granny grating and painted it also in the electric blue, and also some rectangular pieces. Here I'm cutting the granny grating and gluing it into the watchtowers for the floor plating. Final task was to paint the rubber, the tubing, uh, sort of a copper bronze look. I just dry brushed it on and it matches the floor, which looked really nice. Oh yeah, the ladders. I cut these ladders out of a bronze colored uh, granny grating sheet and uh, just I glued two on the left and right side and then I glued some smaller ones, four of them in all, so that the uh, miniatures could get up to the watchtower. And here it is, it's done. Uh, it looks really, the blues are vivid, uh, the, 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 the watchtowers look good, the tubing looks good, everything, uh, just very, very happy with it. So there you go, that is how I made this command center. Uh, it was a chipboard uh, base. Um, the, the main structure is made out of chipboard. And then a lot of foam was cut to give these angled pieces, you know, these pieces and these and these. These two pieces were the most interesting. My dad's a chemist and he keeps me, he always has some interesting things in his workshop. So I asked him if I could have some of these a while back. These are little, um, they're for weighing samples in a chemistry lab. They're very thin, very light. And apparently they have a standard weight or almost standard weight. Uh, but, you know, they're plastic, they're bendy, and I used those for the two watchtowers, okay? Granny grating, standard stuff. And then all the squares that were painted, uh, the, the electric blue and the doors, and is that about it? Oh, the little circles. All of those were little wooden pieces that you can buy from the most hobby shops, Hobby, hobby Lobby, Michaels. They sell bags of them, like 2 or $3, and you'll get, you know, I don't know, 50 100 uh, they're, they're really useful to have because you don't have to cut them, for instance. They're all uniform shape and size. Uh, they're, they take paint very easy. They're wood, so when you paint them, they dry very quick, and they glue well. And again, I could have done all these in chipboard, right? You could do those in chipboard if you don't have the wooden little pieces. Uh, but, you know, I'm trying to save time. And uh, again, everything you see here from start to finish, I, I timed it. it. took less than five hours. Uh, the biggest thing, uh, the thing that took the longest was just the, the chipboard base, cutting it out and uh, adding all the sides to make it a solid base. It took about an hour and a half. So this is definitely something that you can recreate with chipboard, foam. Now for the turret, for these watchtowers, you'll need to come up with something if you don't have these little I items, but you know, a box uh, or make them out of chipboard. And they don't have to be octagonal or whatever, the shape I have here, that could be anything. Um, granny grating on the uh, sides here and underneath with, that were painted the electric blue to match. And all in all, I'm really happy with this. It's just, it looks good. It's not too big to block. You know, if you put it in the center of the table, you're going to have plenty of room on the left and the right for armies to go around or over. Um, but, you know, anything bigger than this, I probably uh, would be a little wary of. But certainly doable. Certainly doable in less than six hours. Um, and if you just follow the instructions I provided earlier, uh, you could probably make one of these as well. I'd love to see it if you attempt something like this. Even if you don't make it the same shape, same design, I, I'm always interested in seeing what people make. So please share your stuff. And with that comment, I'm gonna add one more thing before I go. Uh, 
there have been a lot of new new YouTube channels popping up with people sharing their terrain. It is just, it's a good time to be a gamer, especially a crafting gamer, whether you're fantasy, science fiction, whatever your genre. It's just a great time because all these people are, are online and sharing uh, the things they make and showing you how to do it or how they did it. And you can take what you like, you can ignore what you don't. Um, maybe you see a technique that you never thought of before. I, I frequently see uh, guys like Jeremy at Black Magic Craft and DM Scotty and Wylock. They do fantasy, you know, a lot of times they do fantasy terrain, but a lot of the techniques they use and the skills they're using uh, can apply to science fiction or whatever it is you're making. So, you know, even if I'm making a lot of science fiction stuff, I'm hoping you fantasy guys are getting some ideas about how you could use chipboard to make a structure, for example. I, I didn't have any one inch or two inch foam, and that would have probably saved some time. I could have, you know, cut out the basic shape. But I like working with chipboard. You may not. If you don't like working with chipboard, do it in foam. It's just different techniques, different styles of work, and hopefully you like what you see. But the, I wanted to add that um, in the past I have made a request that if you're making terrain and and you know not a not a ton of it, but just a, a steady pace of terrain, I would seriously consider uh, making a channel, a YouTube channel or Twitch or whatever your medium is. Maybe it's just Facebook. Uh, but some place to share videos of what you're making and how you're making it. There, I started this channel because I was watching certain other channels and I was all caught up with them and I was complaining that, you know, hey, when are they gonna release a new video? And I realized that, you know what, I can do it. I can put out some videos and help the problem, not, you know, make it worse. So for you guys who are, um, you know, wanting more videos and more videos, that's great. We'll keep trying to put them out. I know. Uh, some of the others I've talked to, like V and, and Jeremy and Wylock, we're all working as fast as we can. We like to have a steady uh, a number of projects that are coming at you, but um, we could use, <laughs> we can always use more. And uh, those of us who have an audience, we are more than willing to help you out. There are some channels that I like that, uh, for instance, uh, 3D Printing Tabletop with Daniel. Uh, absolutely one of my favorite channels because I have a 3D printer and I love using my 3D printers for my hobbies. Uh, and he has run with it. He, um, he calls himself the, uh, the, the 3D printing DM. And he's a great example of someone who just decided to throw out what they know in a format, a video format. And those of us who like his stuff, we're, we're trying to help him promote. He's actually exceeded, I'm, I'm, I'm at 3,100 subscribers, I believe. And Daniel's at, well, right now he's over 7,000. I don't know the exact number, but I'm happy for the guy. Uh, obviously, his videos or his channel is filling a need that is out there. I don't want to dedicate my whole channel to 3D printing. I like hands-on making things out of foam and stuff like that. Uh, but I still do 3D printing. But he is really just sort of laser focused on 3D printing for our hobby. And um, it's a great resource. So check it out. I'll put a link in the, in the description below. So anyway, apologies for taking so long and getting on my soapbox. But... The reason I did this was because I did get an email recently from someone uh, asking me when my next video was coming out. And I responded, you know, it'll be next week, probably Wednesday or Thursday or something like that. And I got a snippy reply, you know, well, you need to, you need to be more consistent and have, have your videos come out every Wednesday or every Friday or whatever. I wish I could do that. I have two kids. I have a job. Um, I have, you know, a lot of responsibilities. Everybody does. But my responsibilities do not allow me to do a, you know, every Wednesday video. I'm doing the best I can. And I know most of you, you know, are fine with that. But, um, you know, it just, it, it kind of bugged me that uh, it reminded me of what I was doing. Like, why can't these people put out more videos, more videos, more videos? Um, I didn't want to be part of the problem. So I joined uh, the community and started offering up what I'm, uh, what I'm doing. So uh, not mad at the person who emailed me. You're, we're all cool and everything, but I just, you know, it kind of kind of rubbed me the wrong way for a few minutes that, uh, look, I'm doing the best I can. I'll, I'll put out as many videos as I can when they're ready. Uh, I'm not gonna rush things, uh, and I'm certainly not gonna put myself to a schedule. Jeremy, every Friday, like clockwork. Um, I, I'm, I'm envious, I wish I could do that, uh, but I can't, and I'm not going to. Maybe, maybe one day, but not right now. Anyway, 
I hope you like I hope you like this video. This was a really fun one to make. Definitely one of my bigger pieces of terrain. Uh, not super time consuming. Just a lot of gluing and a lot of fiddly bits to make it look you know like a, a, a base. Okay. Anyway, definitely would like to see what your take is on this. This is DM Jim, and I will see you in the next episode.